Welcome back to another edition of A Consumer's Guide to Property Damage. Today we have Anna Mira, who is the agency principal of her insurance company, American Insurance Point. American insurance Point. Anna, thank you for being with us. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience and how long you've been in the insurance industry and sure. all the First, fun stuff. First, thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Well, I've been in the insurance business since 1997, 25 years. You're not even born. Oh, I was. I'm, <laughs> you know what, Anna? I'm about to be a grandma. No, <laughs> yes, not. I am. That is a very true story. So I was definitely... Oh, I think so. But anyway, so I started as a captive agent. Mm -hmm. And um, after eight years, I sold my book of business because it was very limited. And I decided to become an independent agent. So nowadays I represent, I used to represent 40, but several went bankrupt. So now I represent about 30 different carriers. Okay, Got it. And how many customers in, throughout your... 12,000. 12,000. Wow. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, Thank that you. is quite an accomplishment. Congratulations. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what consumers need to know from, from your side. Not that it's your side, right? But <laughs> it seems to feel like that. Unfortunately, there, there is a lot of conflict these days between contractors and insurance companies. And one of the biggest reasons that Crystal and I wanted to do this is if we can separate the claim again and put the consumer back in the driving seat of yes. the claim, hopefully that conflict can get reduced because it the only person really that is negatively affected ultimately is the it's consumer. The homeowner. And, we're, and we're all consumers, right? Yes. So when these policy changes or these um, legal changes happen and laws are implemented, they affect us all. And so the goal is to provide consumers with the education from a generic basis, because we realize it's not the same in every state, yes. it's not the same with every carrier, but gives them a somewhere to go and understand a little bit more and can dive into more in their state with their agent um, to understand what they're covered for, what they should know, and, and those types of things. So let's talk really quickly about, from a policy standpoint, people, we know cheaper isn't better, right, conceptually. Right. But your homeowner's insurance, it's almost an out of sight, out of mind type of thing. I have to have it. Yes. And not until somebody needs it do they understand the benefits and having the right oh, coverage, issues. right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about what, what you would recommend as far as coverage goes and what's important questions for a homeowner to ask when getting or renewing a policy or getting a new policy? The first thing I think that there is a stigma that insurance is a monster. That is so complicated because you receive that policy jacket with that language that there are exclusions and inclusions and deductible. So it becomes like a nightmare that you don't want to even look at it. Mm -hmm. But insurance is nothing more than a risk tolerance. What do I want to protect? What can I afford not to protect? How much do I need to cover my basis? So I have enough saved for this item or that item. Like we discussed, some people, the furniture is really important. They invest a lot of money, mm -hmm. but some other people are more frugal. So maybe you can uh, change it and every policy can be adapted. So ask basic questions. Nobody needs a rocket science to make an appointment and say, listen, I don't understand anything about insurance. Tell me que simple questions that I can think and I can say, oh yeah, that is important. Oh no, I don't care for that, so I can save there. Like so, a computer person would want to make sure their electronics are covered, right? Yes. Because that's a high valuable item for them. Mm -hmm. Myself, not very technologically savvy. I don't have a lot under electronics in my house. I have, you know, a couple laptops and that's that's about it. So I think I think you're right. Like having an understanding prior to going into a policy of mm -hmm. what are the necessities inside my house as far as my personal belongings go. And then, you know, there are responsibilities that yes. go along with buying a home. Yes. Um, and some people choose to rent intentionally so that they don't have those responsibilities. But, yes. you know, I, I, I think that understanding what you want to have covered 
is really important, but I think we also need to understand that not everything is covered. No, right? like, it's like a, a car. You buy a car, you know that from time to time you need to replace the tires, you need to do oil change, mm -hmm. maybe you need to change one part or the other. So you need to have some money saved. The same thing is a house. If you buy a house and you cannot save a little bit every month, maybe to replace the air conditioning unit, or maybe to replace the water heater, mm -hmm. even the roof that nowadays is a nightmare mm -hmm. in so many states. Well, it's so expensive, right? It's scary. We need to understand yeah. what is considered maintenance. Mm -hmm. So your expectation regarding what is covered and what's not, I see that is what causes a lot of frustration. A lot. People expect, every is everything covered? No, mm -hmm. it is not everything covered. So understand calculate the risk and have that money little by little saved because I'm a consumer too. So I need to save money for my own house. I need to replace the air. One day in the middle of the summer, the air conditioning went bad. And uh-oh. <laughs> so if you don't have money saved to fix that, that's not something that your insurance policy is likely going to cover. Now, fortunately, most most industries now offer some type of a financing yes. option so you can have a monthly payment around it. But I think even even to go back to how you can understand your home better, we get home inspections when we yes. buy when we buy a house, right? Um, but how many people really understand their home inspectors? They report? don't even read. And a lot of a lot of home inspectors don't get on a roof, right? So roofing yes. being a really hot topic these days, I always recommend that you have an actual roof inspection done before you purchase the home so that if, if a contractor says, hey, you've got five years left on this roof, the insurance company, that is a legitimate amount of time for them to insure the roof. Yes. So I don't know that you would know that you're not going to have, you know, you're going to have a coverage issue per se, but you need to be planning for the next five years. Exactly. Right? You can't be waiting for a hailstorm to come through or a windstorm to come through, fingers crossed, yes. before your roof gives fingers up, right? Fingers crossed, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and not that to some people, I mean, that does happen legitimately, and I understand that, but it can't be what we're relying on, yes. right, as consumers. We have to be smart when we're buying homes. And if your roof, if you're buying a house that the roof is older, then... Maybe that's a negotiating tool inside of purchasing and you can put some money away and get that roof done sooner exactly. so that you're not going to be worried about it in five years down the road. Yes. And so, for instance, when a, a consumer comes to you to maybe buy a new policy, is that something that you look at with them? Is it something that you ask? You know, how old is the roof? Do you look at the home? Do you have some data or facts that you pull from and you say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, it does appear like your roof here is older. Um, is there something specifically different that you might suggest for a consumer when buying a policy if that's the situation? A, a roof nowadays probably is the biggest problem we have. And I think it's not geared towards one state. It, 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 it is a national issue. Yes, yes I would agree with and, that. Uh, I would always recommend that any work that is done is done with a permit. And in this case, let's say that the roof is older. Nowadays, policyholders can choose to have it paid as a cash value mm -hmm. or with depreciation. Mm -hmm. So that at least allow them to have a policy. If you're just tuning in, we do have an episode with Vince Perry <laughs> that actually explains the actual cash value and the depreciation in more detail. So please make sure that you go and watch that so you can have a little bit of context again to what Anna is saying. So yes. that way you can keep going because they're not going, what is depreciation? You yes. Know? Yeah. But, it, you know, it's like an auto policy. When you, if you have a total loss, the company will not give you a brand new car. Mm -hmm. They will give you according to some places about Kelly Blue Book or something similar. So the same thing is if you have a cash value um, valuation mm -hmm. on a roof. So mm -hmm. nowadays it's an option. Mm -hmm. uh, some carriers are excluding roof. If you can't I've find anything, mm -hmm. yes. I don't think it's the best choice, but sometimes it's the only choice. Okay. Yeah, I've, okay. I've heard that there's a, an actual exclusion for roofs. Um, there's cosmetic exclusions, you know, yes. especially 
these days if the shingle is a certain type of a shingle. Yes. Because if the mat on the back is not broken, then what's going on on the front? And that, to me, that's really hard because <laughs> I don't I don't look at it that way, but I, I do understand um, because in my opinion, the granule loss is, is really the biggest it's problem. Important. Yes. But knowing whether it's right, wrong, is this or that, it's the homeowner needs to understand that if they're accepting something like that in their policy, there's adv advantages because the payments yes. are going to be lower, right? And they're, they're going to be saving money there. But if they're saving that money, hopefully they're putting it away because the coverage is not going to be the same in the event that they do experience a yes. loss. And I think that the more you know, the better it is for you. Right. Uh, we have a saying, I'm originally from Brazil. You can see I have an accent, but uh, I, I always say that what is agreed is not expensive. So if you agree to a policy that you understand, at least the basic, that is not going to become expensive in the event of a claim. You're not going to say, oh, my Lord, I didn't know that my policy didn't cover this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know this coverage had limitations. So ask. And sometimes when you're buying a home, it's too much. And insurance is something that nobody wants to hear, mm -hmm. maybe because it's related to a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. So it's the last thing you want to worry when you're thinking about getting the key to that house. Absolutely. And it, I think it's, you know, we're going to talk a little bit in a minute about vetting contractors, but I think it's important to have the right agent. Yes. Right? And, and it, to have an agent at all. And that's at something all. I was thinking about because so many people now, when they're buying a new home, um, you know, the, the closing attorney says, hey, or the realtor, the real estate agent says, hey, you need to make sure that you have insurance and you've got to send that, that COI over to, you know, the, the um, bank, yeah, to the bank or whomever's doing the closing, right? Maybe it's the title attorney. At, at the end of the day, so many people go online yes. and they purchase a policy online. And I know I've personally looked at policies online. All they're doing in the end is putting three prices up there. You can have this, exactly. you can have this, you can have this. And it doesn't and say it what takes, they cover. It doesn't yeah. say what they cover and most people choose. So I guess, you know, in my opinion, and I would love to hear you shed some light on this. In my opinion, people really need to establish a relationship with an agent that can truly help them decide what needs to be protected and what doesn't instead of relying on some you know automated computer system that that just takes a look at a, a couple of numbers yes. and makes the decision for and them not only that but they may be canceled 45 to 45 days after they purchase that policy. Oh, really? Yes, because that's the underwriting period. It varies from state to state, but it allows carriers to review the information and make sure that everything was entered correctly. And if you're doing it yourself, then... Yes, and many people think, oh, I'm saving the money because the agent is making a commission. Yes, we live on commission, mm -hmm. but our commission is disclosed. We are not making 100% of your policy. It's a very right. small amount, right. but if you need us, we are there for you. Absolutely. Right, and I, we always encourage clients to review their policies every year. Mm -hmm. Take one hour, make an appointment with your agent, give them a call and ask questions because at that point you already understand things more. You more maybe you purchased yes. something new, mm -hmm. or maybe all of a sudden You're you did a become a gamer. Absolutely, yes, <laughs> you didn't have central air conditioning, but now you're adding air conditioning. There are things or that you bought a seven hundred thousand dollar painting while you were in Europe, but you know it had to ship <laughs> back. Um, hello, I forgot to document that, and now I need somebody to know that it needs to be covered, right? Well, I don't know if you can afford a seven hundred thousand dollar painting while in Europe. I don't know that it, it necessarily it. is going to matter, but it could. It, it does. Could. I Maybe you inherited one. Yes. That's a better, that's a, that's a better word. You inherited it. Yes. Um, so it's really important to ask questions because what you said in the beginning, at the end of the day, it's your policy. And you should never try to push the control of your coverage to somebody else. Is easier? Yes. Well, let's take talk, care of it. For let's me. talk about that for just a second. Um, you know, Crystal and I are both very strong advocates of contractors getting out of the middle of the claim process Absolutely. Um, for a variety of different reasons. One, I think 
our country and in, in, in general is disabled without knowledge. Mm-hmm. And um, secondly, it muddies the water, right? Yes. It, it just confuses things. Um, but lastly, because I agree as, as a consumer, nobody else should control my claim for me. And yes. there are a lot of contractors out there that, you know, are willing to, um, say, or, or, or will say they're not willing to say, but they will say they're going to handle it for you. Yes. You're not going to have to worry about anything from beginning to end. You don't even have to talk to your insurance company. Don't talk to your insurance company. You don't have to pay your deductible. You don't, you know, you don't have any of these responsibilities that you do have. And, you know, I always use this analogy. When you go to the doctor, do you have the doctor pay your copay for you? <laughs> no. And, and nobody would ever even dream they of asking ask. that yes. because it's such a norm. But in the contracting business, like in, in my opinion, if you have a $2,000 deductible, we're going to use flat ones or, or a $500 deductible because you chose the payment on a $500 deductible is going to be more throughout. Uh-huh. If you have a $2,000 deductible, that isn't fair to the homeowner that's paid that for a $500 deductible and doesn't complain and pays their deductible to have a contractor come in and say, I'll waive your $2,000 deductible, right? It just yes. doesn't create balance and, it, and it's not right. Um, so what would you say about that? What, you know, having consumers be comfortable being in control of their claim again? And what, what should they ask contractors? I see that we are all nowadays very busy. Mm-hmm. And we want to be the least involved in certain conflict situations mm-hmm. as possible. And I, saw, I, I think that that's a point that some contractors found a niche to be able to get more money than they should. And I think when you uh, pass that right to the contractor, first of all, they're not waiving anything. Mm -hmm. They will collect that from the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So it's your choice if you're going to pay now or if you're going to pay for the rest of your life. Because what is going on with insurance premiums is something very permanent. Yeah. And it's something that is happening due to fraud, due to legislation gaps, mm-hmm. and uh, several things. But uh, I think that the most important is that you know your rights. And most of the times, everybody makes mistakes. Insurance companies make mistakes. But most of the times, you can handle that claim. And the insurance company wants to be fair. If there is a discrepancy, you can always go back and say, listen, um, you calculated that it would cost this much. I used the same type and quality of material and it came more. They will issue a check, I would say 99% of the time. If it's reasonable and necessary, yes. right? Mm-hmm. You know, in, in, my, in, in the model that I teach uh, contractors nationally, we, we've not had a problem with our pricing being reasonable, right? It, it just isn't. It's when you start to go above and beyond and ask for things that maybe aren't required to be paid on every single job, you know? Yes. And um, I see consumers win a lot more when they're in the driving seat and, yes. you know, I've explained to them, hey, all of these components are necessary on your roof because you know, in this case, I'm, I'm doing a roofing project and this is why this is necessary. If your insurance company, they're not roofing experts, they're insurance experts, right? So yes. things do get left off from time yes. to time. If you see anything on your estimate that's not on mine, this, you now are armed with the information that you need to talk to your insurance company and say, hey, I do need this because it's required for this reason, right? Or whatever it was that, that we've explained to them. And, and the process is not as difficult as I think consumers think it's going to be, or even contractors. Contractors believe that it's going to be hard for the customer. And I explain, I'm like, no, that's, that is the insurance company's customer. It's hard for us because we're not in relationship with the insurance company. Yes. We're not in contract with the insurance company. You know, we, if we stay out of it and we deal with our customer directly and the insurance company deals with their insured directly, everybody is much happier and it's cleaner and safer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what I see is that throughout my 25 years, the insurance companies have learned a lot with their mistakes and uh, several carriers, I've gone back to them and say, listen, if you keep in touch with our mutual client more often 
And if you listen more, you're going to have less problems mm -hmm. along the mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. So I see that nowadays the insurance companies are a lot more proactive. You know, they want to make sure that the client is being served, that is receiving what is fair, and it's being done correctly. Mm -hmm. Many insurance companies have a list of approved vendors that clients can go or not. So I've seen a lot of changes mm -hmm. and positive towards the consumer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you're right. Everybody you know, has this feeling that insurance companies are, are bad, but they're, they are necessary. And let's be honest, fraud exists on both sides. Yes, in right? both sides. It, there's, there are bad players on the insurance side and there are bad players on the contractor side. And unfortunately, there's bad players on the consumer yes. side. You know, consumers... There are consumers that, you know, we've had consumers before ask us to do things, write it for hire or give them this extra money or, and, and I'm not your contractor because I'm yes. not willing to do mm -hmm. that. And Agreed. there's a, there's a thought process that, Hey, if I can get more from the man, right. Yes. More than what's deserved even, then I'm, I'm going to do that. And that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also a misconception that people can profit from a claim. Yes. You know, if you hire a contractor and their estimate happens to be lower than your insurance company's estimate, you don't get to keep I the difference. I had a case like this. There was a fire and uh, the insurance company calculated a certain amount and it was $10,000 more than what the client ended up spending. And I told the client, he said, what do I do? I said, you return the money. Mm -hmm. It's not yours. Mm -hmm. Then I don't think he did. Mm -hmm. he, he told me, oh, I'm not stupid. They paid me. It's mine. But that, that's unfortunate that that happens. Yes. And, and I've seen it on this side where, you know, a customer, you know, has a claim. And I think we talked about this earlier. And you were saying that, you know, they, they were covered for one thing. And the contractor. Yes. What, what happened there? And this client they had two claims. One was what we call act of God. That was a uh, wind. Mm -hmm. Then the roof was replaced and they did use, I'm not sure if it was an attorney or a, a public adjuster, but they got a lot for a small roof. I guess the same contractor, then they had a water loss in the kitchen and the company ended up paying almost $40,000 and told them, oh, let's go ahead and redo your bathroom and redo a few things. So they remodeled most of the house, but they did not take care of the damage that the water loss caused. Oh no. So they could not provide the insurance company the proof of repairs mm -hmm. because they asked they didn't for do that. It. Yeah. They're right, right? They gave you the money. So they don't have the proof of repairs. And now nobody wants to insure them. Yeah, I'm sure not. And that, that's hard. And that happens, unfortunately, um, you know, probably far too often. And I think, you know, one of the things we encourage our customers to do, our homeowners to do, if the insurance company or the insurance carrier is paying to repair something, make those repairs yes. because at the end of the day someone knows whether those repairs were made or whether they weren't and at the end of all of it you don't want somebody to say to you we can no longer insure you and I've had clients that get letters fortunately afterwards you know they did do the work but they still get a letter that says hey provide us proof that yes. this was done or we have to cancel your policy mm -hmm. or not renew your policy. Yes. And I think um, all too often they don't understand that that's a possibility and um, maybe contractors don't explain to them that that's a possibility. And, um, you know, I've unfortunately seen customers have their policies canceled for exactly what you said. They couldn't provide that what was paid for was done. Yeah, so now we have this problem. <laughs> yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, assignment of benefits, direction to pay, and work authorization, right? Because there okay. are three, three different things. Um, I personally advocated very strongly for the assignment of benefits, assignment of claim in Utah a couple years ago because the the UPPA laws, the unauthorized practice of public adjusting laws in Utah are very strict. And I wasn't 
able to discuss scope. Okay. And that was really hard because if I can't talk to the homeowner about what's needed or what's missing, it became really challenging to do my job. And I, I explained that to the department of insurance and the assignment stayed in place, but the laws around it became more strict. And ultimately I made a decision to do retail and retail only Sometimes insurance companies reimburse their customers. Uh Sometimes they don't. And because there isn't an insurance claim, right? Like I don't, I just don't differentiate and I don't get in the middle. But I do know that assignment of benefits can be, they're utilized quite a bit, especially in states like Florida. And they're not always bad, right? They can, they can have benefits to them, but let's talk a little bit about what a customer needs to understand about that when you're assigning the benefits or the claim over to a third party. Yes, here in Florida, the legislation probably is very different from Utah, and it kind of benefits the uh, the wrongdoing. So the assignment of benefits, the client, we the clients are transferring the right of that claim to a third party, mm-hmm. and if that third party goes bankrupt, if they don't complete the job. They can still request the money. They can receive the money. And it's you uh, you as the homeowner who have to finish the job that they didn't. So there are a lot of consequences mm-hmm. on the assignment of benefits. Now, from a contractor standpoint, you know, one of the scary things I can remember when I did do insurance proceeds work is, you know, if my name was on the check with the homeowner, uh-huh. I got paid, right? Yes. The homeowner would pay me. But... At the end of a project, the roof is completed and the homeowner gets the check and all of a sudden that my name is not on it. Oftentimes we would get ghosted or they wouldn't talk to us anymore because having that $10,000 or $12,000 check can make a huge difference in people's lives. And so how can, what's the compromise there? Like how, how can you protect the interests of the contractor Uh who is choosing to do insurance proceeds work because it does exist and that is their right to choose and still and still protect the rights of the homeowner. The, uh, usually the contract can still be paid, the check can still come in both names, especially when it's a larger claim. Most carriers will issue a check in two names, mm-hmm. but the contract allows the company to place a lien on the house if the homeowner doesn't pay the contractor, if that is the case. And we see this a lot. And so as a direction to pay, does is that what allows the insurance company to add the contractor to the check? Yes. Okay. And then what's a work authorization? What's the difference? The work authorization is this. You authorize the work to be done. I will perform on the best of our ability. And you pay us maybe on a schedule, 25 then 15, Mm -hmm. and then the rest at the end. And if you don't, you will place a lien on your house. So it's like a retail contract, just a a contract between a, for work to be done, just like it would be whether insurance company was involved in it or not. Yes. Okay. Um, So I'm a huge proponent of financing and I'm a huge proponent of financing for a lot of different reasons. One of the major ones is it eliminates this problem, yes. right? So um, when, a, when a homeowner chooses to finance a job, the contractor, the bank is now assuming the liability for the contractor, uh-huh. right? So the homeowner is shielded from the contractor being able to steal money. Yes. Um, the contractor usually gets paid directly into their account once the work is completed. And um, the homeowner then, you know, the money comes back from the insurance company and the homeowner can either off other things if they want to or they can pay off their financing it it really becomes up to them at that point so there's a lot of convenience in it do you think that um that if they don't do a direction to pay or they're not doing assignment of benefits could financing be another solution for that or would you recommend is there something I, i think it is especially if the roof if it's not a claim let's say the roof is just old Mm-hmm. And need well, to for be sure replaced. then, yeah. Or because, you know, most items in a home are very expensive. Mm-hmm. Water heater, the air conditioning. Some homes have, like this one here, they may have two units. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when it comes time, it's for both units. Mm-hmm. So I think financing is a great option. Yeah. 
You know, it, it's um, it's interesting because we were talking earlier about, you know, putting money away and we were talking about cars and oil changes and tire yes. rotations and things. And there's programs out there that you can you can join and pay monthly, right? So you can go in yes, and get your tires yeah. rotated and divide it up monthly. You, you can do the same thing, you know, in a roofing type of a situation or an exterior where, you know, there's repair and maintenance programs for HVAC. Yes. There's repair and maintenance programs for... Um, water heaters, like all of the different mm-hmm. things, and so extended warranty. Yeah, yes. extended when warranty. When I purchased my house, my house is older, was built mm-hmm. in, I believe, 1990, and then the realtor gave me as a gift a maintenance program. Mm-hmm. So I really needed because the air conditioning was re. I think it was almost original. Right. If it yeah. was not right. original. So I called a few times. So that helps. And I thought about keeping the program. I guess it was about $350, $400 a year. But just the three calls that I had for the air conditioning, they paid up the program. Right. So Yeah, I did that extended warranty <laughs> thing on my car. And you know how you get the calls every day that you have a, a vehicle uh-huh. that had one. No, I actually had one. And my transmission went out. Um, and it was not an old car. It was a problem within the the automatic transmission, these maintenance, uh-huh. maintenance-free ones. And People gave me a lot of crap about buying it, like it was some but scam. It but oh, it say <laughs> I paid a hundred dollars. That was my deductible, and my transmission was twelve thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Right now, when I purchased it, it was twenty two hundred dollars. But still, you look yes. at the big scheme of it; mm-hmm. it was very Just much worth it. Just be careful, it. like everything. Yeah. It's the same with insurance companies. Don't go for the cheapest. Like when you began, yeah. you asked me. Don't go for the cheapest. Understand why. Because we get a call sometimes. Oh, you gave us a quote and I got a quote to the same carrier, a thousand dollars cheaper. Okay? So there are huge difference on the coverage. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we are offering replacement costs on content, so there is no depreciation. The other one didn't. So there is there are no miracles. Right. And some policies have a mixed policy, it seems like. that, Like my own policy, I started looking at it and I realized that, you know, I had like an actual cash value portion on some of the exterior things of my home, like the roof or the siding or whatever. And then my personal contents actually had a replacement cost value so i had i mean there was actually both and i didn't realize that a policy wasn't either all or nothing yes and some policies also have a water limitation Mm -hmm. so if you have a water loss they have a cap of ten thousand dollars so there are things you need to read because the numbers it may have the same coverage so the outlook may all be a jeans a pair Uh of jeans Mm -hmm. But sometimes the little tag that is there makes all the makes difference. All the difference. <laughs> some people are willing to so pay three hundred dollars, and some so others thirty dollars. They so, look the same ultimately. Yeah, sometimes the coverage that is right there, dwelling, other uh, structures. It, they may all right. look the same, but the fine lines are very, are different. very different. So, on that note, I would love you to kind of tell the homeowners and I think we started to talk about this and maybe we veered into another conversation but when a client or when a homeowner I should say thinks that they have some type of a loss um, should they call you should they call their insurance carrier 1-800 customer support number like where what do they really what would you advise someone to do well agencies are not open 24 7 Mm-hmm. But insurance companies, the claims department, 99% of the time is 24 hours. Okay. Because they want to make sure that whatever it is can be uh, at least helped immediately. Mm-hmm. If it's a water loss, if it's a fire, mm-hmm. that they can start the mediation immediately. So if it's during working hours, call your agent if you feel comfortable, if it's not something huge. But if it is very dangerous, call the insurance company directly. But people that call us, we can provide this first service. Okay, have you stopped the water loss? Uh, What what do you need? What can we help? And sometimes if the claim is below the deductible, we advise them. You have the option to see how much it's going to cost you if you want to still file the claim or if you think it's going to be below the deductible, sometimes it's not worth it. um, 
let's really quickly talk about that. You know, I think that homeowners worry that they're going to be penalized for filing claims. And some claims, you know, they are, right? Yes. Just like you are for a car accident, your fault, not your fault. But you mentioned earlier, act of God. Yes. And um, most storm damage related claims are typically, under my understanding, acts act of, of God. Yes. Um, so can a homeowner be penalized directly, just them, for an act of God? It depends on the state. But uh, I would say here in Florida, they can have up to two acts of God's, and usually it's not penalized. And uh, homeowner's insurance, the price cannot go up because you had a claim. It's mm -hmm. different from an auto insurance. Right. So they can non-renew you if there is any reason mm -hmm. within their guidelines, but they cannot raise your price. They just can't randomly raise your price in the middle of your, Co your coverage period. Even after that, okay. they want to increase your price because you had the claim. It okay. has to be like a whole region, exactly. right? That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we talked about that earlier, but I wanted to talk about it yes. from the insurance side as well. And I think lastly, um, well, I guess it's two-sided, but especially here in Florida, there have been, you know, several insurance companies that have gone out of business and yes. that has created a fear, I think, for homeowners in choosing an insurance carrier. Yes. How do you vet an insurance carrier? How do you choose what is the care, what's the best carrier for you without having those fears? And, and it's contractors are the same, right? You run a risk yes. regardless. And I, and I understand that. You want to look but at licenses is, and histories yes, yeah. and is there like a rating? I mean, you know, I, is there like somewhere that they could go to see how they score or something to help customers or consumers understand? Yes. Uh, carriers here in Florida, they can have either of two uh, reaffirmation or, you know, their financial capacity. Either they are A and best, mm -hmm. but very few are, or they are demo tech rated. And right now we have an issue because several large companies have not yet been reaffirmed by Demotech. So what I would tell uh, clients to do is look in the internet. Uh, what is the rating for such a carrier? And if you're having a, a representation of an agent, ask your agent. I want to make sure that my carrier uh, has at least an A especially if they are financing, the bank won't accept if That's they have a know. lower rating. Okay. Right. There's only certain insurance agencies that a mortgage company would be okay with you yes. having. That, okay, that's but good to know. But nowadays, uh, unfortunately, we are having to place a lot of business in a parallel market that right. is called excess and surplus. Right. So these companies may be admitted in Florida, but they are not rated like you know, the regular carriers. Mm -hmm. They usually are A and best. They're big companies, but they don't have to, uh, they not, are not under the same regulation. So if they decide to cancel your policy because they decide to cancel, they can. Mm -hmm. They have other, you know, There's just other things that are not as clear. Yes. And cut. If they yeah. go under, the government is not going to guarantee anything right, right that makes sense right well and, and a contractor is kind of similar, similar. right mm -hmm. it, you know if you chose a contractor and they go under in the middle of your claim process the insurance company is not going to come back and give you more money right yeah. so it's, it's an unfortunate situation um all the way around and it's one of the reasons to do your due diligence oh front. yes Ask questions. Don't be afraid. Right. We are the necessary evil, but you know what? We don't bite. So <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Ask questions. Ask questions. And no dumb, there's not a dumb question, no. right? I think that, a, that there's a fear sometimes by homeowners, I should know this, I should know yes. this, so I don't want to ask. And they're embarrassed to admit that they, they don't. don't know yes. it. Yeah. And it may seem silly for the person to ask, but it is not. It's mm -hmm. like dogs. You need to ask, do you have any dogs? Or if I have, a, for example, I have a pit bull. Mm -hmm. So I should ask my carrier, can I have a pit bull? Right. I have a, so the agent will place you with a care that, that, that will accept okay that. Yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Or if you're buying a trampoline for your kids or a swimming pool, yes, <laughs> ask the carrier. Some carriers will not accept a mm -hmm. trampoline. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and if you live in an area that has, you know, frequent hail, you might not want a roof exclusion on exactly. your policy, right? Yes. You need to ask those questions. So it's not a rocket science. That's what I tell people. Don't be afraid to ask. And I yeah. have one that I would love to, to hear your thoughts on because I've seen this kicked around both ways. I have a lot of um, clients that will come to me and they have rental homes, maybe multiples, right? Uh-huh. And... Do they have the right kind of coverage should they have an issue if they don't live in the home? Is that a valid question to ask? Because I think I've seen instances where the insurance carrier who was was covering them didn't know that they didn't live in the home and it presented a problem. So is that something that a, a person should be upfront about? You're talking and I'm thinking about my first years as a captive agent because we will do only homeowners. So there was that stigma that if you rent, the carrier wouldn't accept mm-hmm. you. But that has changed. Okay, so good. you need to tell the truth. And sometimes you buy a home, that's where you live, but you upgrade or you your kids are Move. gone and you downgrade. <laughs> so tell the company, I'm not living in that house anymore. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. no big deal. It goes now, back to the policy yes, review once a year. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And like in Florida and other states, there is so much, so many homes that are rented short term. Mm-hmm. Right? And mm-hmm. the companies need to know because one thing is to have a tenant who lives there 12 months out mm-hmm. of the year or eight months. But the other thing is to have a tenant every week. Yep, absolutely. So the liability is different. I mm-hmm. can understand that, yeah, and the damage and what Just, could possibly yeah, happen. Yeah, and it's not that big of a difference. And it's things that people don't think about. They're they're moving. They're going somewhere else. And, you know, the first, I guess their first concern is mine probably would be is not what the insurance still looks like on the house it's that the I no longer live in. It's the last thing you're going to think it's, of. Yeah, Where am I going to live, thing. you know? It is. How am I going to get everything moved to the other house oh, just you, so I can get out of You just this think, one. oh, I'm not even going to think about the insurance. They're going to cancel me. Yeah. Oh, just, just talk. Just be honest. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I've, be I have friend. always found it's just better to be honest, right? Yes. And it always pays off in the end. Well... Thank you, Anna, well, so much you. for being here pleasure. with us today. Thank it was a pleasure. pleasure. I think it was very informative. It's very nice that you came and you did this with two restoration contractors <laughs> you don't even know. know. <laughs> you know, so so we really appreciate it. Thank and you. and, thank and you I will say one last time, if you don't have an agent like Anna that you have a relationship with, you really need to find one because this can make all the difference in whether you have proper coverage or whether you don't. So again, And vet your you. agent, right? Vet, vet your agent. agent. And yes. we're going to talk about vetting your contractor because that is also very important. Extremely important. So you'll want to make sure that you find that episode and tune in. Have a great day.